Hey YouTube, this is Tasha Deshawn and welcome or welcome back to my channel. And in this video, I will be doing the boho knotless braids medium size on my daughter's hair. But right now I am working on trying to get this part correct. Right now it looks pretty decent, but I just wanna make sure that I can get it as straight as I can get it. So I quit braiding full time over a year ago. This video was recorded before my birthday, but it's being posted after. So your girl just turned 47 years old and my eyes be trying to play tricks on me a little bit. So the glasses that I used to only have to wear temporarily, I now have to wear permanently. But let me take that back. I'm not gonna blame that on my age. It is the damage that these cell phones and other electronics is doing to our eyes. Anywho, let me show you guys the hair that I'm using. The Rua One color number four, the Mega Brazilian number two, which is some type of synthetic blend hair that I got from my local hair store. So since I am applying medium size to her hair, I decided to part her hair into three parts at the very bottom because her hair is very fine. Now I'm just gonna go ahead on and start out by telling you guys that I braid different from any other average braider. My parts aren't going to look the same, but they are gonna come out beautiful and full. And excuse the background if y'all hear that lawnmower, but it doesn't matter how early I get up, my neighbors around me is always making some type of noise. I tried to wait till the dogs got done barking before doing this voiceover, but now I'm hearing this lawnmower crank up. So the show must go on. But anywho, I know I'm behind, but I started out separating her hair in three parts and proceeded to braid with just her hair. Once I formed that braid with her real hair, then I immediately started adding small pieces of the braiding hair to her hair. In total, I added about 10 pieces. And although that seems like it's a whole lot, trust me, it isn't because they are very thin pieces. So I've already added eight so far. This is the ninth one. And now I'm grabbing the 10th one. While adding the hair, I was under braiding. Now I am flipping it over. I smoothed it down with some jam. Now I began to overlap in order to add the first piece. I make sure that I braid that first piece in before I pull the curly part upwards. I pull on it to make sure that it's secure and not loose. I clip that curly piece onto her hair just to get it out of my way. Then I proceed to braid down. While braiding the braid down and making sure that I am tight stitching so all of her hair can be tucked in, I'm really just guessing on when I am going to add that second piece of hair. Now I said that I don't braid hair no more. So whenever I'm doing family and friends hair now, I just wing it and record it. There's that second piece. Braid it in, pin it to her hair along with the first piece, and then I continue to braid down but I'm still making sure that I am tight stitching. For those that don't know what tight stitching is, I have a couple of more videos that I explained it on and I went into better details. So I have a few videos up on how to box braid and it explains why tight stitching is so important. So now I've added the third piece and with this third piece, I don't flip it up. I just braid it down to a certain part and it really depends on the customer on what length that they want their hair to be. And then I just add the glue. Some people tie a knot, but I think the glue is better. Just make sure that y'all are not gluing the customer's hair. And although I'm gluing way past her real hair, I tend to drop a few dabs of the glue onto the fake hair to make sure that it is sealed. Once you're done with gluing, you have the braided hair that's still left over that has to be cut. Most people leave the straight end on, but I really believe that it depends on how thick that end is. When I braided mine, I did not cut my ends because they were so thin to where you could hardly notice it. So now we're on to the second braid. And as you can see that I am trying to measure it to make sure that the sizes are somewhat accurate. I then split her real hair into three pieces in order to form a braid. And now I start adding the braiding hair. I repeat it the same way I did in the first braid by adding 10 pieces. And remember that I am underhand braiding. So you see me just flipping the hair. I'm not even doing a full braid before I begin to add another piece of small hair. But while we're here, I'm just going to be honest with y'all. I don't see how people can do this 24-7. I've always been a jack of many trades. God has blessed these hands to be able to braid some of 
the most difficult styles. But just because I was blessed with knowing how to do them doesn't mean that I spent all my years doing them. My patients are very thin and although I've been a very faithful and dedicated braider for over 30 years, I've always loved the traditional box braids. Then they came out with the Senegalese twist. Some people pronounce it Singalese. I pronounce it Senegalese. And if I've been pronouncing it wrong, then ain't no changing it now. But I didn't care to learn them at the very beginning. But then I had a friend to talk me into it. And I started to love them. They are very pretty. So I would specialize in those twists, the traditional box braids, the bob braids. And my bob braids was just not no average bob braids. They were always asymmetrical bob braids. And while I'm at it, I can't forget the cornrows, baby. My cornrows will be corn rolling. But then the people had to come back with all of these extravagant designs like the hearts and everything. And to each his own now, you do your thing. But when the people started coming to me and asking me if I can do all of that, I had to tell them no. Now I was already a precise braider, but you know, the people called me slow. But then them braids would always turn out top tier though. They could never deny that. But just adding all of those designs and everything just was not my cup of tea. So I just left that with the people that was able to do that in their sleep while I continued on and did the traditional styles. And these boho knotless is one of them styles that I can never see myself doing on a regular basis from client to client. Now, like I stated before, doing them on me and my family is totally different because it's not an everyday thing. Now, since I talked y'all all the way through the second piece, we are now on the third piece. So I am adding some braid gel and I'm splitting it back into three pieces again with her real hair just to form it into a braid. And then I add a small piece of the braiding hair, flip it over, and then I add another piece. And I continue to go down continuing to add small pieces to form it into a medium braid. So like I stated before, it takes about 10 pieces and I'm pulling on them to make sure that the braid is secure and tight. Maybe it wasn't as tight as I wanted it to be because I didn't realize that I started all over again. And that's another thing. When you are braiding hair full time, never feel bad about starting over on a braid that you know is not looking right because those people are paying their hard earned money. And y'all already know how them clients can get. A lot of them be telling the truth about a lot of these braiders around here. Now, some of them, they be over exaggerating because a lot of braiders do put a lot of their time and effort into making sure that you leave their home looking flawless. And a lot of the other ones just don't care. But hopefully one day I'll make a video about the ins and outs, the ups and downs, and the pros and cons about being a hair braider and how it is to be a customer as well. But in order not to quit every few months or in order not to stand your customers up, this has to be a passion and not just a paycheck. I remember someone from my past told me years ago that I did hair for a living and they did hair for a hobby as if I was committing some type of sin. But once our friendship departed, they opened up a braid shop, closed it within that same year or the next year, worked several nine to five jobs. So the braiding would be put on the back burner at times while I continued to braid full time, Monday through Saturday for over 30 years. Started in my early teenage years and I quit when I was 45. So now I am 47 years old. And me and God had a talk. And I told him, although I love doing this, and been very true to this. I just don't want to be old and gray and can barely walk, but still standing up braiding hair. It was time for me to walk in my other gifts and callings. Because a lot of you don't know that braiding can take a lot out of you and from you. And it can get you a lot too, but that is only if you are charging your worth. But that's another story for another day. I think I talked to y'all enough, so I'm just going to go ahead on and speed this video up and play y'all favorite elevator music. But the more I record, the better I will get with angles, the better I will get at explaining detail by detail what I am doing. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Make sure that you like, share, and subscribe for more to come. And thank you all for watching.